Hi all, we're going to look at a very interesting game from the other night when Barnet Chess Club went away to play Royston. So we had to travel quite far across Hertfordshire and we're all about 20 minutes late. And this game was on board five with Mike Jones who's rated about ECF 115 and he was playing um, Paul Kemp who was about 176. So Mike was heavily outgraded with the black pieces and almost a 20 minute time disadvantage. So uh, Paul Kemp played e4 and Mike played c5 to Sicilian. And now we have the dreadful c3 Sicilian, which a lot of people seem to be playing nowadays, probably because of a specialist book on it. So it tries to take away the fun of playing the Sicilian defence. Black has to play more um, positionally. Mike played e6, inviting a kind of French defence now. So d4, d5. But here, instead of e5, which would be like the advanced French defence by transposition, white played e takes e5. Mike played queen takes d5. And now after knight f3, Mike played c takes d4. So he's saddling white with the isolated queen pawn. White took on d4, so knight f6. And after knight c3, Mike retreated his queen all the way back to d8. So we see here the isolated queen pawn, which is also just known as IQP if you read in books um, about the middle game. Now bishop e2, bishop e7, black has a very solid position here. Actually maybe this is a passive square for the bishop and it should have really gone here on d3 with the idea of um, later an a3, bishop c2 and queen d3. So maybe this is a bit of a slow plan. After castles, castles, bishop f4, Mike simply played knight c6. So this is um, actually quite a good move as well, I think, because later the knight can have possibilities of either knight a5 or knight b4. Queen d2 now, and now knight d5. And bishop g3 was played. And now the move a6. So black has a potential plan now of b5 later followed by knight a5 and, and, and knight c4, as we'll see. So rook c1, bishop d7. Black doesn't mind knight takes d5. Um, after e takes d5, black could still have a fine position, maybe bishop f6, black's okay. Bishop c4, so white's exerting more pressure on this d5 knight. And Mike didn't mind now sort of removing um, white's isolated pawn, because he translates that relative structural weakness into another weakness now of the c4 square. So it seems black's um, positional play is really coming together now with knight a5 because after bishop d3 b5 and we see now the c4 square is a great square to add pressure to. So this is I, f I think a very instructive game for how to play against the c3 Sicilian so far. Queen e2 and now bishop c6 so this is another very logical move. So white's light squares are under fire here, particularly d5 and c4. So knight e5 was played, and now bishop d5. So now white plays the rather crude move, bishop b1. Mike's not worried though, because after knight c4, rook fe1, he just plays rook c8, so he's still strengthening his, his pressure on these light squares. And after queen d3, he doesn't mind playing f5. So it, although it's in theory creating this backward pawn on the semi-open file, white's um, attacking chances are diminished. And what happened now, after knight takes c4, rook takes c4, white's played bishop e5. But um, black's got a perfectly good position here and played bishop f6. Rivka actually gives, at the moment, this position a, a slight advantage to black. Bishop c2 was played with the idea of bishop b3 harassing this, this rook. But now, after bishop takes e5, white um, played a horrific blunder. He should have played d takes e5, but Rivka still gives that as much better for black. Let's have a quick look at d takes e5. There's a new variation. Rook c6, and black is much better. Let's see, rook e d1 or bishop b3, Ribka thinks just bishop takes and black's better. For example, like this, a takes b, a takes b and now rook d3. So black's got all the pressure. 
But in the game, white played rook takes e5, and can you see the crushing move now, which black played? I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Black played the crushing queen g5, so hitting the g2 square, and also the c1 rook. So great. Um, White's in trouble now, and after queen f1, Mike regretted not playing bishop takes g2, but actually what he played was in fact the strongest move, because if bishop takes g2 here, White would have f4, with actually uh, advantage to White, because if bishop takes f1, f takes, and here, um, White has the advantage, rook takes c3, King takes f1, so why is Ribka giving up that bishop? So in this position, why can't the bishop just move? If the bishop just moves here, then white would have bishop b3 with a strong position. Because if, say, rook c7, rook takes e6, and now this pawn's uh, menaced, so, and, and the discovered attack threatens. So king h8, rook takes a, a6 with a big advantage to white. So M Mike accidentally... Um, it's good he, he overlooked bishop takes g2. He played actually rook takes c3 with a big advantage for black. More than two unit advantage, according to Ribka. He's now threatening rook c8, just increasing the pressure on this, this pin. f4 was played, and after queen g6, white desperately um, sacks the exchange. And now played bishop b3, so is the whole exchange down now. Mike just played rook c1, not minding this check. King h8, and after queen takes c1, queen d6, queen c5 was played now, and again Mike played the absolute strongest move, at least according to Ripka, he played rook d8, so he's encouraging black to take the queen, but instead, um, sorry, in white to take the queen, but b bishop b7 was played now, and now we see queen takes d4 check, and after rook takes um, here, black is the exchange up in an easily winning end game. And the rest of the game was kind of technique. So Mike just snapped up that, that queen pawn. He brought his king to the center. And he munched on g3. And now he just sacked the exchange back to leave a completely winning king and pawn ending. And the rest was technique. Actually, um, Paul played on uh, letting Mike queen two, two, two pawns. But um, let's have a quick overview and summary. Because this is an example, a great example of how to play against the c3 Sicilian. So leaving white with the isolated queen pawn and not minding about giving white a backward pawn on the semi-open file here. You'll see structurally that this semi-open file, we have this backward pawn now. So it's a translation of the isolated queen pawn advantage into something else, which is actually more exploitable, readily exploitable, by these manoeuvres with knight a5 and rook c8 and b5. But this bishop c6 was also excellent. And, you know, Mike really played this like a, you know, very, very strongly, I believe. Uh, he neutralized all White's attacking pressure and was much better even if White had played D takes E5. Um, you know, um, and this, this was just beautiful now that after Queen F1, Mike played the logical Rook takes C3. You know, White's just fallen to bits here. And the rest of the game was um, kind of technique after this. Just the exchange up and beautiful simplification to a completely winning endgame. Just munching these pawns and sacking the exchange back. So, I thought that was a very instructive game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.